Portions of the following program may have been pre-recorded. Warning, the following is entirely satirical and should not be taken as truth or fact. Styles Rebel Radio and the Rebel Podcast do not own any copyrighted material that may be included in this broadcast. Viewer discretion is advised. So if I'm on a highway and I just let go of the gas pedal too much, mm-hmm. bing, someone's, someone's re-rending me hard. Suspend the show right now! You're gonna zip line directly into the harpoon? Yeah. How do you know about planes? I know a lot about planes. Buckle in, dude. It's gonna suck. Put your hand on the screen. How did they find out? It's... Who was the one? This show has gotten infinitely more gay. The mystical land of New Jersey. Uh, I don't understand how the laws yeah. in this country work anymore. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to the Rebel Radio Show, live on Cutting on Censored on WSRR Radio, saving the underground music scene. My right, Shaney. Hey, everyone. On the board is Jules. Howdy. I'm Radio's Rebel DJ Style. We're brought to you by Synergy Music Studio out of Chicago. If you are an artist in the area or out of the area, take advantage of Synergy's awesome services they provide. Go to SynergyMusicStudio.com to get the full rundown on that, to my knowledge. Yeah. And I'm, I'm pretty sure on making the statement that it won't come back to bite me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think they're going to try and buy your face and vocal rights. Probably not. However, I don't think so. There is a company in Russia that's starting to do that. Oh, okay. That's scary. This robotics company in Russia wants to pay people, or has started paying people, offering uh, $200,000 mm. to buy the rights to your face and your voice to use in robotics. You're getting the... Uh, the old James Earl Jones? I was thinking of his name. Thank you. Yeah. James Earl Jones treatment. Rest in peace. He just died. Yeah. Two weeks ago? Uh, Yeah, two weeks ago. No! Remember you can't do that. that. That's owned by Disney. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, we're sued. We're getting a cease and desist. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty wild. So does this mean... So, okay, this robot... I'm just reading the headline, yeah. and then I'm yeah. going to go off of it. This robot company will pay you 200 k for permanent rights to your face and voice. Does this mean in, in the sense that they can use my face as an NPC in a video game? Ooh, yeah, I wonder what the actual breakdown is of what they have the right to use it for. Right, like what can they use my face in what rights to my yeah. face do you have you know right. what i mean because obviously it, virtual rights to my yeah. face but what virtual rights to my face it, do you it's have? under like, the guise of robotics so like sure and the base level pitch is like we want to make robots with realistic faces and voices <clears throat> mm, okay. and we want your rights but oh like you gosh. said i wonder what's under like obviously you have to assume ai and modules like that you're probably signing your voice and face over to a humanoid a humanoid ai robot that has your face yeah can they create a Instagram bot? Probably. With and, my voice and face? And Probably. that's the thing. My first thought was like for voice, it was like, well, you would just be like the TikTok auto voice. Like, hello, welcome to yeah this. And you, you would be like the auto voice to the text-to-speech voice. You know, mm-hmm. like that's what you're kind of signing it to. But So, you know, when you, you have uh, any kind of service, and this is going back to like when voice recognition, or not even recognition, but voice uh, text to t- talk start yeah. first started. You know how when you pick a voice, like even on a GPS, it gives you like you got four different default voices. You can have Tom or David or Jenny or whatever, right? Yeah. And they have default names. That means theoretically, uh, if you sold your your likeness, your face and voice to this company, they could use your voice and you could be like a generic voice number three. Your name's Bill on the voices. I want the voice of Bill, and it's just your voice. Hey everyone, you don't I'm even Bill. get to retain your name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's like you guys brought up a good point before we came on of like, what if they use your voice or what if they use your face in a game, but they don't connect your voice yeah. to it or your voice is an NPC for someone else in a video game or something like that, or like a, I like, like a humanoid robot, but it doesn't look like you. Yeah. But it has your voice. I would negotiate that in my contract where mm. if they took one, uh, if they took both my face and my voice <clears throat> rights. Mm-hmm. That they would have to be used together, and that's a, another question. Then, can they? Can you just sign off on one or the other? Yeah, like I'll give you I my would rights do my to my voice, but not my face. I'll give you the rights to my face, but not my voice. You know, like yeah. I wonder if you can negotiate that sort of thing contractually, because two hundred k is a pretty hefty sum of money. I would want to make sure that there's dotted lines that I'm signing on. Yeah, in, in a, yeah. I'd want to make sure that there's paper involved that isn't just green, you know? Because uh, So my assumption with this is the reason they're doing this is uh, who is who is the one that tried to sue Meta for using a, an AI Scarlett voice? Johansson. Scarlett oh, Johansson. Scarlett yeah. Johansson. They said it was her voice yeah. because they had approached her to record for them yeah. and she said no and yeah. they made a, a voice module that was really close to hers Yes. and she turned around and sued saying that that was her voice. That was crazy. Um, yes. My assumption is that's the reason they're using the face thing in general is so if they make 
they completely 3D construct a face from scratch. They mm-hmm. just make one. Sure. Right? They, they use CGI, they make someone's face. Mm-hmm. I think that saved them from you going, hey, that looks a lot like me, and suing them and for using your likeness. Ah, uh, I see. I think that is probably legally their workaround. Of right. Like, okay, well, we don't want, there's, you know, 8 billion people this is going to look like somebody. Right. Regardless of how we make the face, somebody is going to say that this looks like them. If we legally have the rights to use a specific person's face, we avoid that and say, look, here's the copyright. This is the face we used. This can't look like you turning around on them and saying, this can't look like you because it's supposed it's, to look yeah, like it's them. It's literally this person. And you just kind of look like that person. So, yeah. ta-da. Yeah, I think that that's, uh, you're probably correct in that assumption. It's the, still crazy though. I would never want to walk into a like a company and see a robot with my voice and face. It'd be so scary. The company is known for producing hyper realistic human like robots. Oh, why? In 2019, Promobot launched the Android Robo C, a made to order robot that could be modeled after anyone's appearance. That's so terrifying. There's a picture of a robot here that looks exactly like the person standing next to it. Uh, I'm assuming this is like the CEO or something like probably. that. You can tell. There's a little uncanny valley happening. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. But it's slight. Yeah. Like, this is pretty good. This pretty is good. probably the least uncanny valley, like, Android. Yes. That's, that's modeled after yes. humans that we've seen. I think that's... it's just the eyeballs. They didn't get the eyeballs yeah. right, but everything else. The eyeballs else... and the chin a little bit. Yeah, um, that's so strange. Here's a quote that says, Everyone will now be able to order a robot with any appearance for professional or personal use. Ooh. Yeah, that's a scary thing. That should be illegal. This so, is my personal if, use robot. That looks like Shane. <laughs> if, yeah, if I just bought a robot that looked like Shane, oh, and I could God. do whatever I wanted with it. See, then do I have the right to, like, sue? And I think that's where this comes into play, is they're trying to avoid that. Because uh. I think initially they probably did. I'm not saying that people are going out buying robots that look like someone else. Right. I'm just saying that was probably their thought process going into it. Right. And then they realized legally that could land them in some hot water. Yeah, that seems like a that seems like their train of thought. Oh, look, that's oh, Arnie. It is. That's so weird. Also, I don't like Arnold with glasses. Yeah, those wire like frames do not work on yeah. Arnie. Old Benjamin Franklin Schwarzenegger <sighs> up there. It's just so, like, this is too much for me. This feels like if I were to see this out in public, I would start to have, like, a meltdown. I know we've had this conversation before, but why are we doing this? What does this do for us? <laughs> Yeah, I don't see any benefit. We When we have movies like iRobot where we know how this ends. <laughs> if I see a husband and a wife walking together like out at the mall or something like that and then two feet behind I see like a robotic version of the husband pushing a stroller with the baby in it. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? And that's the thing you gotta the think about, What the hell right? is going on? So if you are doing this, here, here are the, the two circumstances. Either I'm selling my likeness to this company mm-hmm. and... You, a random consumer, are going to buy a robot that looks and sounds like me. Weird. Just because you don't know me and this is the robot they're selling that looks like a person. Right, weird. Or myself or someone that knows me personally is going to buy this robot that looks like me. Equally weird. Yeah, so I'm going to have a duplicate of myself. To do things for To me. do things for me. Weird, weird, equally weird, weird on both sides, don't do this. Which, and I know this is like another conversation we had a long time ago. I would rather have, and we talked about this when the Tesla bots came out. Yes. It was very much a campy robot. It, it looked human, yes. like in the body structure. Yes. It was bipedal. Right. But it was just like black and white, sleek metal, and it had, had like, like a, a smiley face. Or it just had a blank face, and well, then it had it, like a Tesla logo well, on it. Well, it had a digital screen. Yes, it had a change. digital screen face, yeah. yes. So like, and it was just like you could, I'm assuming, program a variety of things for the face. Right. But it was robotic enough to where it wasn't uncanny valley Mm -hmm. and like it was still campy enough to where i'm like okay yeah no it's a funny little robot still felt like uh uh have you ever played or seen the game yeah yeah feels like video gamey yeah futuristic still yeah Yeah. like this is just weird this is a little too close for comfort this is like if if you've ever played the game detroit becoming yes yes it's very very realistic they're like trying to replace us. Yeah. They're making sense. <laughs> They're making this is literally sense. the plot of Fallout 4. They're making sense. They're making sense. sense. I know you've never played Fallout, yeah. but one of the big plot points in Fallout 4 is that uh, there's an organization called the Institute. Mm-hmm. They make what's called synths, mm. synthetic humans. Yes. And they steal humans in their sleep and replicate them into a synthetic body and program them to have the same mind. And so the synth never knows that it's actually a robot and the people around them don't know. There's no way to actually tell it is a robot Unless you kill it. That's like um, the Santa Claus 2. In the Santa Claus 2, 
he creates a toy version yes. of himself, and it's a big fat toy Tim Allen. And he tries; he thinks that he's the real Santa Claus, but turns out the whole time he's just been a toy. And it's actually the real Tim Allen has been Santa Claus the entire time. Rug pull on the audience. It's actually is that Santa Claus two or is that Santa Claus three? Santa Claus three is with Martin Short. That's as, right, Jack uh, Frost. Jack Frost. Yeah. Don't I know my I know my the Santa Claus lore. All right. <laughs> tool time I'll tell you what It's tool time Not these tools though Get these tools out of here These tools are too advanced for Tim I want to know It doesn't say anywhere What these sell for Probably multiple thousands of dollars I would say Millions like, Oh millions I believe that I would that. say millions um, That's so weird like, I would think if... this costs more than Tesla bot does Yeah 100% Because they have to model it after your face And shit yeah. like that They have it... to program your voice Yeah that's so strange that it would have your voice, too. Yeah. It would walk, talk. Well, it probably wouldn't walk like you, but it would talk and look exactly like you. Yeah. So strange. This is going to be a really weird coping mechanism for people in 100 years. Oh, don't yeah. even say people that. People are going to die, and they're going to get robots made of them. Well, you know what I just popped into my brain recently again was with the Apple Vision Pro, how you could, like step 3d step into pictures and mm. you could like walk around the picture like it was something along the lines of one of the gimmicks with the apple vision pro was you could 3d take a pr picture and like walk around the room and 3d get yeah. the entire room and then it would be something where you could look back on it later put on the headset and then walk around in that room again as if everyone was in it exactly how they were when you were taking that's like, weird that was a really strange thing to me, and this feels like like how you're saying. Like yeah. It, it would have been used as like a really strange coping mechanism, like Apple 3D Vision Pro, the room that the hospital room that Grandma's in, or something right, like yeah, that, yeah. you know, and then walk around it when after she passes. Like that's yeah. that's just as creepy. It, it's it's giving me the same feeling as that. It's like, well, you know, you're getting into your 50s and 60s. Let's make a humanoid robot of you so that we can keep you in the garage until you pass and then we'll, we'll bring you out uh, for barbecues All right, and stuff. Time you know? to break out grandma. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, Fourth of July is coming up. Let me break out grandpa, yeah. I think that's a really weird aspect that no one talks about with this, with AI and, and robotics in general is I think one of the biggest things that hurt us as a society mm -hmm. is it's detaching us more and more from life in general and what reality is. Yeah. So like everyone has their own way of coping with things. Right. But like your way of coping shouldn't be to act like nothing happened and that they're still here. Yeah. That is not yeah. beneficial for yes. anyone. Yes. Yeah, because people get detached. And this is reinforcing that. People get detached from reality without artificial intelligence and uh, uh, like yeah. head or like goggles that can take you into the internet. You right. Know? People get detached from reality in reality. So if they have the opportunity to step into to not a, or to not and to step into like a past moment yeah. or something or to turn on you know my ex-boyfriend bought 3000 right and pretend like nothing Yikes. ever changed yeah super strange yeah super duper freaky deaky times it's and like, like unhealthy it's like people that get their uh their family pet stuffed and taxidermy yes, to, exactly. to, to the 10th it. extent of it exactly yeah and it has a permanent spot on the couch yeah oh god oh that's weird very very strange and it is coming to a neighborhood near you i wonder statistically how many people get their pets taxidermied probably, probably not a high percent but higher than i'd like i would bet in like the uh, uh, nuclear family 50s, 60s era of America, it was probably a lot more popular. You think? I think. Just because... I think it'd be more popular now. Mm, you might be right. I don't know. Just I think people are weirder now. I think that... Well, I agree. But I think that there is a more general uh, uh, interpretation that taxidermy is weird. I That's think that, fair. I think that people in general kind of think that taxidermy is weird now, whereas... It probably Maybe. did have a weird boom period. Yeah, right. We're, we're like, like, we're doing it because we can. Right, we're doing it because we can, so it got popular, and then people were like, wait a minute, and then it, it fell off, yeah. you know? Well, my my overarching moral with that is yeah. there's probably a higher percent of people that taxidermy their pets than I'd like. Yes. Meaning, there's probably a percent of our listenership that has or knows someone that has a taxidermy pet. Oh, 100%. I've seen a and taxidermy I, pet before. I hate really? to think that those people are listening. Yes. So if you're listening, why? And why I, are you taxidermy? Two one six eight five nine eight six nine nine. If you taxidermied your family pet, I want to know why.
Hi, this is Melissa. And hey, it's Matt. Hi guys, my name is Ari. Coming at you from Synergy Music Studio. Come through to a Synergy Naked session. Synergy Naked is a live performance recording, also captured on video. Look for our releases on YouTube at Synergy Music Studio. We're located on the south side near Chicago. Passing, Passing through? through? Hit up our DMs on Instagram at Synergy Music Studio. Rock hard. Imagine spending hundreds of dollars of your own money to advertise a massive corporation. Now imagine that same corporation using your money to pay a public figure to sell a product back to you. Unfortunately, you don't have to imagine. Corporate product placement is the monopoly of the clothing industry as we know it. That's where genericclothes.com comes in. Stick it to these big brand clothing cunts by wearing something straight and to the point. Genericclothes.com has got you covered and lets you have a laugh at their expense. Nobody cares about the details. Get to the point. With shirts like floral pattern, trademark logo, music band, and more. Once again, that's genericclothes.com. Whoever's the owner of the gray sedan, you left the Rebel Radio Show playing. Let's talk about sports. We like sports and we don't care who knows. Football, 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 tennis, tennis, hockey, golf. golf. We can't play that anymore, guys. Yeah, but it's still a good song. <laughs> it is. We used to play that a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Anytime yeah. we did a sports thing, we're pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, FEMA, which I wish I would have looked up actually what the acronym stands for before we went on because we talked about it. Uh, Football, <laughs> excitement, nope. man. It's the Federal Asperger. Emergency Something Administration. Female electrocuted. Male Federal accidentally. Emergency Management Agency. Management Agency. Federal Emergency Management Agency. Okay. Fungus. No. Nope. Ex- fungus envelops martial acquisitions. Fear Elmo, mi amor. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a French organization <laughs> against Sesame Street. Uh, <laughs> FEMA, who is in charge of like providing... Um, Aid and notification about natural disasters, mm-hmm. volcanoes, uh, nuclear attacks, right, tornadoes, hurricanes, things like that, and then providing like pop up shelters and supposed to be providing aid for like areas affected by severe. Well, conditions. they like they send out like uh, it's like what you get if there's a hurricane warning. Yeah, and like it beep pops up on your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... They're part of the EA- EAS or. EBS, however you want to say it, either yeah, one. CBS. Emergency Broadcast System. Not part of CBS. Very funny. Um, <laughs> and after the Diddy stuff, I don't want to be. Uh, <laughs> after that conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, but FEMA accidentally sent out an emergency notice. Mm, okay. And it's not the That's first bad. time that something like this happened. But yeah. the emergency notice in this case was very uh, not threatening. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's yeah. not like a missile strike or volcano right. or anything like that. Uh, after the the Cowboys suffered a fucking crushing loss to the Saints um, this past week, I don't remember what the exact score was. It wasn't you, what terrible, like forty four to twelve or something like that. Yeah, I think it was it was a pretty bad loss. Um, but the point of it was the Dallas organization of FEMA mm-hmm. was doing internal testing for their messaging system, mm-hmm. and they were supposed to just send out this test message to their workers, their internal service. They didn't. Mm. They sent it out to general public, and it was something along the lines of, if you've been affected by the recent devastation of the Cowboys' loss to the Saints, <laughs> we're providing aid or something like that. Yeah. I wonder if anybody reached out. They did very quickly make a, a notice saying, like, hey, that wasn't supposed to go out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when you brought this, it reminded me, like, I was like, man, this isn't the first time something like this is, because, yeah, so, in 2018, there was, in Hawaii, there was a false missile alert. Um, On the morning of January 20th, or on the morning of January 13th, 2018, an alert was accidentally issued by the EAS, and uh, over television, radio, cellular networks in the U.S. state of Hawaii, instructing citizens to seek shelter due to an incoming ballistic missile. The message was sent at 8.08 a.m. local time. Um, and the state had not authorized it, but 
Yeah. That's good. Right. That's it, good. They're they're fucking up. They've done this isn't the first time something like this has happened with these people. I've got my other problems with FEMA, but like this should be this should be a glaring issue that like right. they keep fucking this up. The What's thing, going on? Yeah, the thing that's supposed to alert citizens of like impending doom and their Accidentally sending us football scores. Yeah, the next one's just gonna be like, "Hey, lol, <laughs> <laughs> you up?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's the the presidential tests not that long ago. I remember that one. And yeah. everyone yeah. and everyone was saying uh, it was something to do with five G. Remember that? Yeah. They were, they were testing five G, and if you turned off your phone, it was supposed to. And then there was all the reports of people turning off their phone, and this still coming through. And why was it still coming through if my phone was off? I think we did mm. a whole conspiracy show about this, so, like yeah. randomly thrown in there. But yeah, they did the the presidential test where it was literally just like, this is a test from the president, and there was no need for it, and it was scheduled, and everyone got it. Sick. That. Yeah. Sick. Why, th- th- why? Why are we getting these? Why are we getting these notifications? Yeah. Why are people letting us know things we don't need to know? I know we talked about this three years ago now, but I'm still against Amber Alerts. Yeah, it's a little. Much. I'm not gonna go out and find this person. <laughs> You're yeah. gonna you're gonna be mad at me if I do. Well, Has anybody ever yes. gotten an Amber Alert and then like seen it and reported it? Yes, there was a uh, one thing that just happened. I just saw it on TikTok. It was like a teenage girl was driving and she got an Amber Alert and she was like, "I'll just look around." Sure. And she uh, like actually came across the car, followed it, and called the cops and got the. Hmm. Um, like, she get paid for that? Got the plate number so. and interesting. She, she, she got went paid on for the that. She got paid. Yeah. She got she doing the police work. Yeah, <laughs> she got paid. That's my crime. I just stopped right there. That's the thing, man. You're I'm, welcome. If I'm doing vigilante justice, they're number one. That's the that's the risk you run. Is they they can turn around and be like, Well, you're interfering interfering in a police investigation. Yeah. You went and tracked this person down and drove them farther than they should have been or they can turn mm, that around on you and be like, wow. you are acting as a vigilante. But they asked for my help. They didn't ask yeah. for your help. All Amber Alerts say, like, stay inside or stay safe or something like that on them. Like, it literally says, like, make a report if you see something. And then it's like, stay indoors or stay out of this area or something yeah. like that, usually. What? Like, who's running these things? And why is... I guess, like, what would the consequence be for this being an accident? You know what I mean? Like... Someone needs to be fired. I know I say that a lot. Someone needs to be fired. No, no, yeah, I agree. Someone needs to be fired. But, like, furthermore, so that this sort of shit doesn't continue to happen, because clearly... It's like, happened multiple times where it's an accidental, like... They sent a ballistic ma- missile strike to Hawaii, or like a report <laughs> right. of a ballistic missile strike. Let me ask you this, because cause EAS is nothing new. It's, you know, there's a flash flood warning, there's high winds, there's hail, right. there's tornado in your area, the EAS goes out. And the way EAS works is it's not station by station. It is a national syndication, mm. uh, and it overrides your signal. Mm. So if, if we're doing a live show, if we're doing a pre-taped show, if it's music... And an EAS comes through, it will override it no matter what. I mm. cannot do anything on my part to play something over EAS. It will take over the signal itself. Yeah. Like um, if like the president addresses yep. the yeah. nation, that'll yeah. I, take if, over. If I am in a live board and I am controlling everything that's going on and the whole signal is being sent out from what's in front of me and EAS kicks on, mm-hmm. that signal's dead from my board. It mm. automatically shuts it down um, and overrides what everyone's hearing. That's how EAS works. My how, question is... How does it work if I'm, like, playing Fortnite on my PlayStation and I'm, like, hooked up to the internet, but I'm not... It's not going to come through on your... not going to come not through. not going to come through on Fortnite, no. President's going to, like... Ksh, 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 That's not my how that works. fellow Americans. What a great, what a great uh, little Easter egg in a movie that would be if, like, that's how someone saw the EAS. They were playing Fortnite yeah. and the TV flashed. <laughs> yeah. and... like, that's not how that works. I don't know why Obama yeah. was there. That's been yeah. a couple of years now, yeah, but... He's, you know... <laughs> he's still pulling the strings. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so th- that's the way EAS works. But the reason for it, obviously, is like primarily it was used on radio mm-hmm. and then it got brought over to TV. And I'm sure we've all seen it on TV where, you know, a flash flood warning comes across the bottom of your screen that runs as a lower third. Right. Or like Jewel said, if it's a presidential update, you know, a lot of companies just cut their feed to that. Right. And um, then they're like, we now return you to this yeah. Yeah. thing cur- currently in progress. And naturally, I understand that the next progression of that, when cell phones started becoming major things, was like Amber Alerts and to have these messages pop up as notifications now. Yeah. With with FEMA, with all these different you know, alerts that we get, like mm-hmm. the, the Hawaii nuclear one or, nucle- or Hawaii missile one that wasn't actually a real thing, right. but it was sent out on that signal. Do we need that? I don't think we need that in today's day and age. 
And I get the point is if something like that was to happen and say there was like a missile attack, right? Mm-hmm. The point is to notify everyone in the general area or citizens in general that something is happening yeah. to alert you as fast as possible. Right. But in today's day and age, if that's happening, it's already going out over EAS. So if you're in the car and the radio's on, it's happening. If you're watching TV, it's happening. But if you're not and you're just on your phone, it's still going to be all over it. It's going to be on Twitter. Yeah, it's right. Gonna be it's going to be anything. It's going to yeah. be on anything that you would be looking yeah. at. Yeah, you are going to see it. Unless you're like playing a game or something on your right. phone. Right. There's only a couple or like text. I don't even know. And, yeah. and, and that's the case too. Is So if you're playing a game and you get an Amber Alert and you have headphones on, you're not going to get it anyway, right? Right. Interesting. So then how does it like, do you, and, okay, I, it probably doesn't work like this, but I'm wondering if the government or what, I, like, I wonder if even in, in a country like North Korea or something like mm-hmm. that, do they have the power to, if I'm on my phone, can they just pop up on my screen, like presidential message, it, connected to my phone, connected to like cellular towers, and can do they as, have, as in like a message, even like a video feed, like I Jules is saying. Do I they don't know have about the that ability to do that via cell phones? I know they phones? can do that with TV, but not if it's like right. a streaming service. I'm like, sure they can. Like if I'm even on my home screen or something like that, and just like. Psh, I'm, uh, it's probably a possibility. Obviously, Honestly. nothing like that has never happened, right. and we don't. So we don't know. Right. The possibility I think of that's it, what exactly what it is. I'm sure somewhere in the inner workings of the federal government and telecommunications, it is possible. Right. Will we ever see it? I don't know. Right. But you know, it's just like we talked about with the fucking the presidential message. People turned their phone off and still got that message. Right. It, it activated and rang despite their phone being off. You can turn all the trackers you want, all the maps off you want on your phone. You can turn 5G, 3G, whatever right. you have off on your right. phone, and it's still going to track you. They can still ping where you're right. at. Right, like, right, right. That's, that's the thing about it is it's going to be able to get that message because we are operated by the Federal uh, Communications Commission. Yeah. We're operated by the FCC. Right. And if not the FCC, a different department subdivision that monitors that specific media medium. Yeah. So, like, there is going to be a way to get that message to you That's so if spooky. they want to. That's so spooky. Our phones could be off. Yeah. All of our phones could be off and, like, okay. If they again, have a notification they deem worthy, they can push it through. Right. We don't know this, but theoretically, if you want to talk hypothetical and they could just pop a video up on your phone. Yeah. And, yeah. and we, it would, we couldn't click our lock button wild yeah and it's not like sending a code to an apple to make it restart either 216-859-8699 if you want to send us a spooky message hey if you're listening then you should listen to off air because that's the show that i have i have to do promos for so this is that promo that you're listening to Hey, Style here, and I want to take a minute to talk to you about Hellbender Vinyl, a proud supporter of local and independent music and a proud supporter of WSRR Radio, Hellbender Vinyl is one of America's most trusted custom vinyl pressing plants. Located in Upper Lawrenceville on Butler Street, Hellbender is Pittsburgh's first and only vinyl record pressing plant and is here to help local bands and artists get their albums onto vinyl. Hellbender Vinyl offers vinyl record pressings to ensure that albums don't just end up as a bunch of ones and zeros floating around somewhere on the internet. So, if you're interested in giving your album a physical release, you can visit hellbendervinyl.com to start the conversation today. Plus, every customer at Hellbender Vinyl receives five free test presses to review at no additional cost. Hellbent on quality, hellbent on service, hellbendervinyl.com. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Beavis. It's back on. What's back on? The Rebel Radio Show, dumbass. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. We're talking about gamma radiation now. Ooh, okay. I, Hulk has it. Yeah, I love... Bruce and what he's done with himself recently with the whole big and green thing. I think it's nice. It's a nice fashion choice that he's done. The, the Incredible Hulk from yeah. 2003 yes. is not the Incredible Hulk in the MCU. Those are separate entities. 
they are the same entity it is a different actor so i thought hang on i thought the the 2009 hulk oh maybe it is a two i'm sorry it is the 2009 hulk because what what i know my knowledge of the hulk being in like the marvel movies is um they did the incredible hulk or they did whatever the incredible hulk is the 2003 one okay they did hulk Mm -hmm. um under the guise of Kevin Feige and it was going to be the next installment in the Tony Stark like they yeah, had yeah, they were yeah. saying they were laying the seeds but Kevin Feige specifically said no don't use this guy but the director um had already like written the script with him in mind yeah, sort of thing yeah. and wa- and the actor was already like going out and saying that he was doing it and wanted yeah. to be involved or, or uh, Edward Norton yes yes and Edward Norton's Hulk and so they were like, well, fuck it. We have to run with it. But when the Avengers come, we're going to change it to Mark Ruffalo. And, Interesting. And they did. So they had him in mind already, Mark Ruffalo? I don't know if they had specific. They, they just might, knew they were going to change it. They might have. It was just more a situation of they knew that they didn't want Edward Norton, and he did it anyway. Here's it, the thing. I like Mark Ruffalo as Bruce Banner. Yeah. I think I like Edward Norton's Hulk better. Because it's not Mark Ruffalo's face pasted on the Hulk. Yes. No, I, it's just a very generic Hulk face. Yeah. Yeah. I We're not talking about Marvel at all in this segment. By the I way. could keep going, but yeah, we don't have to. We don't. That's not what this. That's not what we came here to do. That was technically, a decent amount of time. Yeah, you know, that's six minutes. That's not that bad. It's fine. Yeah, I could, I we could, always take our, six minutes to talk about the Hulk. I think that's our longest tangent. Or you're good. No, I could go longer if you want. Hey, yeah, you want to keep talking about the Hulk? No. We can just do. We can scrap all the plans we had to <laughs> talk about the lore of the Hulk for the entire third segment here. Well, it's just very unfortunate that it's not Sony that has the rights. It's Paramount? It can't be Fox, so. It's another big brand that has the rights to the Hulk, and so... Which is something that isn't talked about a lot, because so, I guess they uh, do play well enough. Tesla, right? <laughs> yeah, Jules <laughs> Tesla. <laughs> That's a good uh it's a good statement. I like that and I agree. Yeah, I agree too. So when the Hulk <laughs> <laughs> is red. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. He's not gonna have the mustache. Oh my god. <laughs> so literally, Red Hulk isn't can- canonically in the comics, Red Hulk has a big burrowing mustache yeah. and the only reason Most versions. Most yeah. versions. The only reason that he doesn't in the movie and the new Captain America that's coming out. Yeah. Is because um, Harrison, Frick, Ford. Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones didn't want to grow a mustache. Didn't want to fucking grow a mustache. He was like, eh, "I'm too. I'm Indy. I don't need to do that shit. I'm Blade Runner. Fuck you." I like you. how Harrison Ford doesn't actually want to do anything, but he does it. Yeah, he does it anyway. <laughs> didn't want to do the last Indiana Jones. He's like, "Ah, eh, but I'm gonna come back and do it anyway." He's who just, else? He's just giving his grandkids money. That's all it yeah. is. Yeah, take a million dollars. It's like when you're given a Tesla to try and go do maneuverability, and then the fucking DMV is like, "Hey, you're not really driving." Someone, whoever does post on these things, put some applause in there because that was a really good segue. I do post on all of these. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, style, I love you. <laughs> it's post, post, style, and post, I love you. Uh, uh, yeah. Tesla driving teen denied driver's license because car has quote too many safety features. <sighs> Uh, what? This, what? Yeah, the teenager honestly... went to the DMV to take his driving test, and the car was deemed to have too many safety features for him to pass the driving test. Why would you ever take your driver's test in a Tesla? Because right. that's probably the car he was given. Right. That's probably the car. You. It's probably both right. And I think, like, it's such a new... I'm surprised it hasn't popped up before. Yeah. And it probably has, and we just haven't heard about it. But, like, this is such a weird new age issue where the instructor has to say... This car is too too advanced to be on the road with an inexperienced driver. Yeah. So you need not a smart car. You need a shitty car. You need a shitty car. That's the crazy thing about first cars. And in general, I've, I've had this thought of, you have those people that go out and if they're going to buy their son or daughter their first car Mm -hmm. and they'll specifically go like oh what is the highest rated safety feature this year of the car right right right. does it come with the automatic braking and and the the blind side assist and does it come with all this stuff right that's all well and good what i'm concerned about is if this car gets hit how well is it going to take that hit Yeah. yeah yeah that's what i'm concerned about because and that's why i kind of agree with this article the car can have all the features they want for safety. Sure. It can have automatic braking. It can have a beeper if I'm going over the line. It can put me back in line like a lot of the Teslas do now. It can have autopilot yeah. in it for all I care. Right. If I don't know the basics how to operate that car, 
none of it's going to matter. Right, exactly. Because something fails, exactly. and I'm flying down the highway at 80 miles per hour, the only thing stopping me and the car in front of me is me. Right. I wonder if there was like a similar outrage when automatic transmissions came became Ooh, more popular. Because I've only ever driven stick a couple times. I don't really know how. I wish I driven, did. Driven is a loose term to use for what you did. Listen, pal. Um, but I feel like it, it, you learn how to, or at least you should, theoretically, in a perfect world, you learn how to drive a car on stick. Yeah. And then if you want to, you can get an automatic transmission because it's way easier to drive and way less complicated, mm-hmm. but it's still the same thing conceptually. Yeah. It's still the exact same. It's just way wa- more watered down. Yeah. And then if you're experienced enough after that, you can get, like, there should be tiers on your driver's license or something like that. Can have automatic transmission. Can have yeah. auto drive. Like, oh, you're, you've you retired? You can now have auto driving now, if you would like. I think that, that... No, that's a really good theory. I think that it should be, like, a government uh, uh, tier list, almost. Like, you get... You have to learn how to drive stick when you're 16. Your youngest and most prepped and ready to do something like that. Yeah. Once you've learned stick and you master it and you drive enough to feel comfortable driving stick and maybe when you're 25, the age people are granted the ability to rent a car, yeah. then you can get an automatic transmission if you want. And then 65 is autopilot or, you know, 40s, 50s yeah. is like a, a maneuverability or what it, what's it called? Uh, what's maneuverability? Self-parking. Oh. the the Where yeah. it backs you in. You know? Parallel parking? Yeah, the self-parallel park yeah. and shit. Like, you know, like it can have tears to it. So the article says that the one thing that outright failed the driving test was regenerative uh, braking. That shit is so... I don't know if you have ever driven a yeah. car or if any listeners of home have li- driven a car with the regenerative braking. That shit is the most confusing, like scary thing about driving a car like that. I uh, feel like we've touched on this before, but that yeah. can outright kill someone. If you don't know how it works, you can come to a screeching halt on the highway. Yeah. Oh wow. Going I can go legitimately from from 60 70 to 0 in maybe 2 seconds. So the 3 3 maybe. Yeah. So if I'm on a highway and I just let go of the gas pedal too much. Mm-hmm. Bing, someone's someone's rear-ending me hard. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's very and like that was something that when I got into the car wasn't told to me at first. Yeah. Oh. So I had to get in and realize, like at first I was using the brake and then maybe like five minutes into the trip when I got onto the road, I was like, I don't even need to use this. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was at a red light and my foot, my feet were off of any pedals. I hate that. I wasn't touching any, my, both of my feet were on the ground and I was at a red light stopped. That's it was terrifying. The stra- I wasn't in park. I yeah. was, it was yeah. the strangest thing ever. Well, it's and I don't know if this falls into the same category as regenerative braking, but when you get too close to a car and it starts slowing it down for you, yeah, because I think it's, that it's deemed proximity, probably can fall somewhere in the same like same concept. But what the what the DMV instructor is saying when they got in the car to do the test drive, take it out on the what do you call it? Not test drive, yeah, um, uh, driving test, driving yeah, test. Yeah, yeah. When, they, when they take it out on the road to the, the road test. exam, road exam, sure. Before they even left the parking lot, they had two marks down on their paper. Oh my gosh. for the car slowing down. Oh my god! So yeah, because he's probably break. taking his foot off of the yeah. And by oh the time they actually she... got onto the road and approached, I believe it was a stop sign or stop light, uh, stop sign. They were approaching a stop sign, and he was braking, or the car was stopping way too soon. Yeah, and that's when the driver told the instructor that I'm not even braking. The car is doing right, that. right. So like by the time they had pulled out of the parking lot into the first stop sign, they had failed the test already. That's so because the car was saying, "Oh, you're you're breaking. You want to stop." That's so unfortunate, and that's something to me that just feels like that particular person taking the test hadn't driven that car enough. Yeah, yeah. you need yeah, to drive. Sure. You need to drive that. That feels like a first timer thing to like jerk the, because like sure, I did that for the first couple of minutes in the parking lot, maybe, yeah. and so I can understand this person getting two point, but. Once I was out on the road, I realized what was going on. Like, I wasn't going to let myself get on the road if I didn't realize how the car worked. Right. You know what I mean? And that's, that's the important thing, too, is, like, you have to take in cars. If Do you have to take in cars in general? Yeah. yeah. Or is that it just t- if you're going through class? No. To get your license, you have, you to, have take, to take in cars. Yeah, you have to take, I think, at least five. At least, And I think it's a state-by-state thing, but you have to take at least three in cars, maybe five I, even. I took four, I know. Oh, maybe it was four. Maybe it's four then. I don't know. Um, But for my first one, I took the in-car or whatever. Mm-hmm. But for my next three... 
I had the same in car person, instructor and car, mm-hmm. because I talked to them and I'm like, oh, this is just different from the first one I drove. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, no, it makes sense for you to drive the same fucking car. So let's just schedule all three of them with this car. Right. Because it doesn't make, when I took my driving test and all my maneuverability and everything like that, I took it in the car that I was going to have. Right. Because it wouldn't make sense for me to go and pass my driving test in yep. a Kia Soul if I'm going to be driving a Mustang. Right. Those aren't the same car that's not going to prepare me to handle that car. Right. I think that's a big thing that people overlook too, and it's the common, um, you know, the the work around the system to get the smallest car you can to do your driving test in because you right. can whip through maneuverability and it's easier to handle. Right. That's all well and good. Congratulations, you got your license. It's, it's the same thing as, you know, lying on your resume. If you yes. don't know how to do the job once you're yes. there, exactly. you're screwed. Exactly. Yeah, I driving guess. is something I don't fuck around with. Yeah. I, I, it's because it's serious, and it's like it's fun. I enjoy it, but you also have to take it seriously and know what you're doing to have that fun. Right. I think you know. So I passed my maneuverability in a Ford Expedition, mm. but I failed the road portion, and then I ended up coming back and taking the road portion in a Ford Escape. Man, I never failed. Or not a Ford Escape, tests. I'm sorry, a Ford Fusion for the road test. Filled that L's test six whole times, baby. <laughs> six motherfuckers. Was there a reason time. why? Um, genuinely, so I've I've told the story on air, right? I don't know if you have. I don't uh, know if you've told this story. Let me try to brush through it, it yeah, as yeah. quickly as possible because I know that I've told you guys it off of the air, not off air, but so I did all my in cars really quickly and I got my temps as soon as I was 15 and a half. And so when I was 16, I hadn't driven in a while because I hadn't taken my in, or I had already taken all my in cars already. It was all done, and I was just kind of like floating. I, I was yeah, just ri- waiting, right, just waiting. Um, and I wasn't driving that much, which I I should have been. Uh, my first test, I had it with two female instructors, both in police uniforms, like they were definitely worked for the DMV still, yeah, but they were in full police attire, and so I. I'm immediately shaking in my boots. It's a terrifying situation, and I hadn't driven in who knows how long. Right. I do my maneuverability, and I completely butcher it. I'm fucking the whole thing up, and one of the ladies goes, um, because I have one next to me in the passenger and then one behind me. One of the ladies goes, okay, well, you didn't pass that, but let's do the on-road. And um, I forget what it was with that one. I do remember this now. I forget what it was specifically with that one, but I failed the on-road, um, she was essentially just like, yeah, okay, you failed, turn around, go back. Wasn't it like you pulled out too far or something like that? Was that it? That was one of the other, oh, second sorry. time. Um, Didn't want to jump the gun. My no, mind. you're fine, you're fine. Second time, I, uh, passed maneuverability, but then I failed the on-road because the guy ticked me too many times for, like, I turned, I put on my turning signal too early. He was being a real stickler. Yeah, so, like, that yeah. one I probably would have been fine, but the guy was definitely being an ass. Like, he marked me on shit for my maneuverability, too. That was kind of sketchy. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy was definitely just a prick and, like, was marking me on shit that was very unnecessary or, like, too early stopping, yeah. too early. Weird shit. Um, and that's how I failed it. It wasn't anything major. The third time, I pulled out in front of traffic and the lady, like, literally, I, I would have T-boned myself. I pulled out over three lanes out of the parking lot and the middle (laughs) turning lane and there was like a white van coming right for us the lady held onto the thing and then as soon as we got to the side street she starts ticking every and she's like okay make a left make a left turn back into the parking lot you know exactly what you did here's your temps and i was like okay well that was really bad don't do that shit again (laughs) you didn't have to sit there and take all of them right (laughs) you knew what you did (laughs) and then fourth time i passed it with flying colors i'm uh passing through an intersection and the guy turns and asks me he's like uh, uh why did you fail these other times like you did so well on this one and i was like i don't know i think i would turn to him I, was, I don't know i think i'm just nervous like i don't know what happened and i pull into the parking lot park and he's like all right well you failed and i was like what i do and he's like you ran that red light back there oh. and I was, he when he asked me that question i turned to look at him oh, yeah. and i blew through an open red light at an intersection and he was like you would have passed it like you were did literally perfect it was his fault it was 100 he was testing me <laughs> he did the setup had He's to like, wait. oh, this thing is yellow. Yeah. Let's ask. I forget what happened on the on the fifth time, but then the sixth time I passed it. So I had That's to wait. Crazy. I had to wait over a year because, or I had to wait six months legally, and then I waited That's over right, a yeah. year. I waited. I think I got it when I was twenty. So I waited three years. I waited kind of a while. That's a crazy set of unfortunate circumstances. I was so pissed that the fact that he asked me that question and then I had to wait six months that I was like, I just held it off for years. Yeah, that would have been the one too. I was like, me. fuck this. I don't even care. I'll get rides. Like, yeah. this is stupid. I'll have a self-driving car. Fuck <laughs> this. I yeah. only failed once. 
Oh, I fucked it up a, a whole bunch of times. But this does lead to like the self driving yeah. and the the regenerative brakes and like it moves you into certain lanes that are away from. This is a problem for how, new drivers. We're not going to learn how to drive a car properly. How about this? I think this would be a good safeguard for this, and maybe not perfect, but I think it would reduce the risk of things in this exact circumstance mm-hmm. happening. You have to be twenty five to rent a car, which is stupid. Yeah, uh, but you have to be twenty five to rent a car. I think you should have to be twenty five to be in a self driving car or a car with certain features. Yes, yeah. I agree. To be behind the wheel of it. I agree. Like. If you're you're even if you own the car, you are the legal owner of that car. You Doesn't can matter. buy it. Doesn't matter. You have to be uh, yeah. 25. Yeah, yeah I like, like that. Cop pulls you over. You're 18, driving a you know self driving Tesla. Right. They're gonna have to. You're gonna have to call someone to take the car. You can drive that Tesla with someone else in it. Sure. Like yeah. if you have sure. your temps, you can drive yeah. that. You can be like like you have like a, a AI temps or something like that. Like a like a special features temps. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. where you can drive a a car that has you know. Regenerative brakes and shit like that, but someone else has to be in the passenger seat who's over twenty five. Right, that would be a good. Yeah, that makes sense, and and would would uh, eviscerate problems like this. Yeah, I still, I mean, I still think you'd have a lot of people that number one either wait till they're twenty five then. Yeah, or you'd have a lot of people that as soon as they're twenty five, they go out and get a self driving car and rely heavily on it. Well, you still have those people, but I think it would be a lot less risk than brand new driver not learning how to drive relying on the car maybe i'm wrong in this but and and maybe i just don't have a good scope or a good gauge too and this is kind of unrelated but i feel like well younger people aren't getting their license as much i don't think i've noticed that i think it's a it's becoming more not a trend but just like a happening something that is occurring without any intentional doing that people are just less motivated to get their license we gotta remember too and this is is kind of a different issue but we live in, a, in Ohio, and mm-hmm. you drive everywhere. Right. Regardless if you're in the city or in your, you're in the country part of Ohio, you right. drive everywhere. Right. I know a lot of people that don't have their license just mm-hmm. because they're in New York or they're yeah, in right. Chicago. Right. And they don't need a license. And I think that that is valid. If you're someone who like was born and bred in New York and like that you lived on the streets of Queens or yeah. whatever and you walk to your job and or bike to your job, sure, do that. You don't need your license, but which it's crazy to me though that like that's fine and that's understandable. Mm-hmm. I get the, the logic behind it, but not being like I don't know thirty, and you lived in New York your whole life, and worst case scenario, you legally cannot operate a car. I think that's crazy to me because you said, "Oh, well, what's the point of getting a license if I'm taking the bus or walking everywhere?" Yeah, yeah, maybe. I, I, like God forbid you go on vacation. And yeah, need a right. Car. You need to rent a car. No, I, I hundred percent, I do see that. Um, I again, I think it's becoming less popular because shit like that isn't as. Well, I've even noticed, like living in Ohio, needing to drive everywhere. There's a bigger majority now of people not. I, I getting do know a lot of people not. I know people our age without yeah. a license. That's what I'm saying. I know people our age and even a little bit younger, or people who are turning sixteen. Yeah. Who and they're are just not getting cho- their license. Choosing not to get their license. Yeah. And it's like... I couldn't fucking hmm. wait to get my license. Yeah, no, I was when, stoked. As soon as I was 15 and a half, I went and got my temps. Uh, exactly. I was stoked. On my birthday, I'm pretty sure. I know, yeah, me too. I was stoked. It was a huge deal. I know a, a lot deal. of people yeah. wait until they're 18 because you don't have to do a lot of the You don't have to do the driving school. Yeah. yeah. I understand that aspect. Of and it. that's fair. That's valid. I, I had to pay for driving school out of pocket. And I remember yeah. that was, it was like five hundred and something dollars for yeah. driving school. And it was a bitch. And it was I, only like eight weeks. <laughs> I cheated through the written portions of driving school. Really? Like on the big tests and stuff like that. I had a, There was a buddy from our high school that went to the same driving school as me. And so we would just like, he would give me answers to the old tests and shit like that. That's funny. Yeah. We never did anything in my driving school, in my classes. We literally watched videos every time. And then we, oh, yeah, really? I think we had one written test at the end. But really? it was like. Eight questions, the simplest test. We did a lot of testing in my Yeah, we had testing, okay. and like there was a break, and we everyone would go across the street to get snacks, <laughs> and then we would come back, and there'd be like more. It was just an old lecture, an old dude lecturing. Really? Yeah. yeah we literally just watched videos. I wish. At That's the end how of I it, did. At the end of it, we watched the Bill Cosby comedy segment. Are you serious? Yeah. It was, I forget what it's about, but I think mine was a combination of both of yours because we watched a lot of videos of car crashes and people dying, and mm-hmm. then oh, we didn't watch that. Really? No. Oh, uh, we had to get like a signature from our parents to watch the video because uh, it had dead oh, bodies. Oh, that's wild! In it. No, mine was just very boring. Like the basics of stopping. Oh, that's wow! Very interesting that driving. They were very schools, dated videos. Driving schools can be different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Depending on which driving school you go to, different like rhetoric. Well, listen, I want to know your driving experience. Two one six eight five nine eight six nine nine. 
let me know how you had to get your license or if you have a license at all. Yeah. And then send me those funny little numbers on there and then yeah. your social security as well. Yeah, yeah, we, right. We promise we won't, you know. It'll, it'll be fine. Coming out of identity theft. <laughs> yeah, no, it'll be fine. 216 859 8699. We really need to start putting the satire disclaimer on the live radio show <laughs> as well. Uh, <laughs> but if you want to hear that, you can listen to the Rebel Podcast. It comes out every Wednesday at 10 a.m. on all major platforms. Of course, that's the first hour of the Rebel Radio Show. We're live every Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern right here on WSRR Radio. It's the home of underground music. We're saving the underground music scene. We're nationally local. That means your local bands played worldwide and we also have a great variety of our own shows independent produced radio shows that we play here on wsrr radio shows like shaney's off air that is the truth ruth we have the pigeonhole and of course we have the rebel radio show as previously mentioned but if you want the full schedule breakdown for show times and more WSRRradio.com is going to be the homepage where you can find all of that, as well as all the great podcasts we produce there, as well as all of our awesome sponsors like Synergy Music Studio out of Chicago, GenericClothes.com, and Hellbender Vinyl out of Pittsburgh, PA. And for more information on all of those, again, they're all linked to our homepage, WSRRradio.com. You can also get all of our social media is there as well, including the Discord server. Where you can chat with us about all those shows and a variety of different topics like Liminal Spaces, Fallout, Marvel, yeah. wrestling, yeah. pretty much anything. There's there's a whole meme page, and of course there's a big conspiracy page as we approach October. It's going to be all conspiracies all October long. That's two each radio show. <laughs> one hour each. You're probably going to hear more of that. <laughs> That's the new one. That's the one for this year. And you're going to hear True Vault Escapades at 10 p.m. weeknights right here on WSRR Radio. It's the Fallout-based radio drama. It takes place in-universe. Uh, they've made a bunch of leaps and strides. They have voice actors from all over the world doing amazing work, and they have the backing of creators from the Fallout series and voice actors from the mm. Fallout series as well that have vocally supported them, as well as being added to the Fallout fan wiki, oh. which WSR Radio is now a part of hey. as well. Hey, look at that. So make sure you check out True Vault Escapades 10 p.m. weekdays every weeknight right here on WSRR Radio. And until next time, I've been Radio's Rebel DJ Style. To my right, Shinny. Bye, everyone. On the board is Jules. Adios. Peace. Break the